from Northeastern Oklahoma's News Center. Jerry Weber. Karen Keith. Gary Shore. And Jeff Lazalier. This is News Center 2, live at 5. Flanked by President Bush and his cabinet, the nation's first drug czar is sworn in. Good afternoon, everyone. William Bennett has a tough task ahead of him. But he says it is not an impossible task. Bennett will have six months to come up with a drug strategy addressing key areas, education, treatment, law enforcement, and interdiction. Some call that mission impossible, but the former Reagan administration education secretary says he's ready to take on addicts, dealers, and what he calls drug-crazed killers. The federal act that created the drug czar post also set aside money to fight the war on drugs. And with more than a, a one and a half million dollars earmarked for Oklahoma, the scramble is on to see who gets it. News Center 2's Heidi Browning joins us now live with more on what's being done to bring the money to Tulsa. Heidi? Well, it seems like a pretty good strategy. Small police departments like here in Sand Springs are banding with the Tulsa County Sheriff's Department. They're hoping that a combined regional effort will make them a larger group and give them a better chance of getting some of those federal funds. Federal and state drug task forces go after the big dealers, but that means the smaller local drug rings often slip through the cracks. They don't really have the time to come in and get the guy who hangs around maybe the school ground or the local bar. And so we're going to try to fill the gap of what is not being done with this task force. But coordinating different agencies takes money, money for equipment and manpower, money the federal government is now handing out with new grants. The Tulsa Police Department is taking advantage of a similar grant. They recently received $250,000 worth of equipment that breaks down and identifies illegal drugs. In a few hours, it does the same work it was taking a chemist a day to do. <clears throat> That's intolerable when you're talking about filing drug charges. Uh, and hopefully, upgrading equipment will not only provide us with state-of-the-art instrumentation, but it will also give us the capacity to perform analysis more quickly. And that's the kind of success smaller police departments want. They have the most to gain from the team effort. The task force will be made up of several agencies and officers from several agencies. First of all, many of the local officers are known to throughout the community and they're certainly known to the drug dealers. This will give an opportunity for officers from another area unknown to come in and, uh, and to assist in the investigation. Now the task force should be formed by later, this, later on this week and they have to have their application in by the end of the month. They're asking for about $300,000. If they get it, the money could materialize by May. Jerry? Heidi, does it look like they have a decent chance? Well, they feel pretty optimistic. Right now, there are no kinds of regional drug task force in this part of the state, and they'll take that in mind when they decide who gets the money. Good. Thanks, Heidi. Fewer tickets and fewer collections. It's creating a money problem for some Oklahoma courts. Traffic fine collections are down. The Highway Patrol says that's because of fewer officers on duty and a higher speed limit on interstates and turnpikes. Whatever the case, the state collected just under $13 million last year in fines, and that's down more than $1 million from 1987. The money is used in all 77 counties for civil, misdemeanor, and criminal cases. It pays for all the ex expenses except the judge's salaries. A tragic scene in North Tulsa today where a driver lost control of his car and hit a tree. 35-year-old Charles Moore died at the scene. Police say he jumped a curb, traveled more than 200 feet before striking the tree. Moore was not wearing a seatbelt. Tulsa Public Schools are putting out the Help Wanted sign. They're looking for a lot of substitute teachers. Every day, school officials spend hours trying to find substitutes, but the district doesn't pay as well as others in Oklahoma, so filling the classrooms can be tough. The district had been requiring certification for its substitutes, but not anymore. To attract more help, the standards have been lowered. A high school diploma will do. Tonight at 6, Shannon Patterson has more on the shortage and the drive to get new substitutes. In less than 14 hours, the polls will open, and you'll be deciding how long the state legislature can meet. Governor Bellman in Tulsa today is pushing a measure for shorter legislative sessions. He says lawmakers waste too much time deciding on funding issues, and that puts school districts and state agencies in limbo, waiting to see how much money they will have to spend. State Question 620 would limit the legislature to 90 meeting days. Turnout is expected to be light. The polls open at 7 in the morning. 
Well, some Eastern Airlines passengers make it home a day late, and a two-hour delay could not stop the shuttle discovery. And the investigation begins into a deadly military crash in Arizona. Is Mike at the bar? Have you seen Mike? What happened? I was in an accident. Mike, you've got to quit drinking. I know. Then let's call Schick. They've got the number one success rate. How long does it take? Just 10 days and a couple of follow-ups. Makes a call. Schick also provides complete two-year aftercare. I kept getting these headaches. And then my assistant said, why are you squinting so much at those printouts? I didn't mess around. Went straight to Lens Crafters. Lens Crafters crafts your quality glasses in about an hour by putting the whole lab right in the store. So you can see better and feel better in about an hour. No more headaches, great looking top quality glasses, and all it took was one hour. Lens Crafters, custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour. Woodland Hills Mall, upper level next to Sears. The Glamour, Tulsa Auto Show 89, the past, present, and future of the automotive world. This Thursday through Sunday, Expo Square is filled with world-class automotive displays from domestic and international manufacturers. See hundreds of vehicles displayed from cars and trucks of your dreams to cars you've never dreamed possible. Extravagant displays, exotic presentation, and displays of days gone by. Brought to you by your Tulsa Auto Dealers, Tulsa Auto Show 89, this weekend at Expo Square. Like a mother and a child Always Like a headshake and a smile Some things never change Some things always Just as scouts pledge to always help others Walmart pledges to always keep a generous supply of the brands you trust in stock Walmart Always the low price on the brands you trust Always Despite a two-hour delay because of thick fog, the Space Shuttle Discovery had a virtually picture-perfect liftoff this morning from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. These astronauts will deploy the final $100 million communication satellite that will allow almost unbroken radio contact between Earth and space. NASA officials say today's successful launch is just another step toward renewed confidence in the program. The five-day mission will end this Saturday at Edwards Air Force Base in California. California. While NASA officials were happy to see the Space Shuttle Discovery make it into orbit, hundreds of Eastern Airlines shuttle passengers were just happy to get home. They were among those who purchased $12 tickets for weekend flights on the Washington, New York, Boston shuttle. So many took advantage of the first-come, first-served deal that there weren't enough seats for everyone to return home yesterday. We had to go back to church and spend the night in church. Where did you sleep at the church? Uh, on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it worth it or was it fun uh, or what? The blessing we got from church, it was worth it. Yeah. We, we really got a blessing, so it was really worth it. The strike crippled airlines, which is seeking shelter from its creditors under the bankruptcy laws, will let people use their special tickets until Friday, even though it was only a three-day offer. The bodies of all 15 people on that Air Force helicopter that crashed last night have been recovered. The Vietnam-era 3H-3E Jolly Green Giant crashed and burned on a routine training mission in the Arizona desert. The chopper carried four crewmen from Arizona's davis Montham Air Force Base and 11 soldiers from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Still no word on what caused the crash. The Senate is moving quickly on the nomination of Wyoming Congressman Dick Cheney for Defense Secretary. The Armed Services Committee will open hearings tomorrow on President Bush's second nominee for the top Pentagon job. The Senate haste follows its rejection of John Tower for the defense post. Members on both sides of the aisle say they e that uh, they expect Cheney easily and rapidly will be confirmed. Cheney was the number two ranking Republican in the House when chosen by the president for the Pentagon post.
Looks like our great weather from the weekend has carried over into our work week, and we'll find out if it's going to hang around for a while. But before we do that, you can figure a lot of business deductions from your taxes, and Paul Strassel takes a look in today's tax tip. Today's tax tip is brought to you by Oklahoma Central Credit Union. Driving on business is one of the most overlooked deductions available to a great many taxpayers. It's a regular, everyday occurrence for you to hop into the car or truck and run an errand. You're entitled to a tax break when you go to the airport to pick up a client, attend meetings across town, see associates, go to conferences, luncheons, dinners, company events. If you own and operate your own small business, you have deductible driving expenses too. There are two ways you can claim your business driving deduction on IRS Form 2106. The first is you can use IRS's optional standard mileage rate. The good news is that for 1988, the rate for the first 15,000 business miles is 24 cents a mile, up one and a half cents from 1987. Additional mileage is deductible at only 11 cents a mile. However, for most people, it costs a great deal more than 24 cents a mile to operate a car. That's why you're better off using the other method. That's when you add up all your receipts, showing your purchases for gasoline, oil, maintenance, tires, repairs, taxes, tags, registration, and of course, depreciation. No matter which method works best for you, you still have to show the IRS the number of business miles you drove during the year, the number of personal miles, and your percentage of business use. What's more, your business driving deduction has to be carried over to your itemized deductions on Schedule A and listed among your other miscellaneous itemized deductions, which when totaled are only deductible to the extent they exceed 2% of your adjusted gross income. I'm Paul Strassels. Sure, I've got questions about finances. But, but where, where can, can I get advice from someone I trust? Where, where can, can I get, get more for my money and get all the services I need? I need someone, some place to believe in. When you've got questions about money, we've got the answer. Oklahoma Central Credit Union. We've got the answer. Straight advice. People you can trust at Oklahoma Central Credit Union. Call 664-6000. Women are getting tough. Reaching for the lime away. Attacking tough hard water stains more often. Because they know hard water stains aren't so hard. When you tackle them more often with lime away. With Lime Away, it bites build up every time you clean up. Hi, I'm Bill Cox. Since 1938, Cox Chrysler Plymouth has been selling cars here at 11th and Lewis. We built our reputation on three simple ideas. Honest, fair dealings, courteous, dependable service, and low prices. Like this LeBaron at $10,995. Plymouth Colt at $69,95. Chrysler New Yorker at $15,995. So remember, when you're ready for your next car, new or used, you can always count on Cox Chrysler Plymouth because I want to sell you a car. All right, guys, lights out. There's nothing more exciting than a fast break. To Pizza Hut for a great supreme deal, where exceptional leaping ability and blazing speed both come into play in pursuit of Pizza Hut's Supreme Pizza, loaded with six mouth-watering toppings. Now get one medium for $8.99 or better yet, two for just $4 more. And that's a deal worth running out for. Pizza Hut, making it great. Arson may be to blame for the worst fire in the history of Big Bend National Park in West Texas. More than 600 acres have already burned, and it could be a couple of days before the fire is brought under control. The weather has been a mixed blessing for firefighters. 90-degree temperatures have hampered efforts, but winds have been light, and they're blowing the fire back into itself. We have had enough precipitation around here in the form of rain and snow that it would be a little hard to burn grass or brush here right now. Boy, it would, because things are moist. But I, I'm wondering if it's going to dry out. I don't know. It's been very nice. We had a great weekend, Gary, but boy, what a pollen problem today. That really is the top story in the weather tonight, Jerry, is the pollen count is up over 22,000 today. And the lion's share of that is the cedar and elm pollen, which is just very tough on a lot of hay fever sufferers in particular. That cedar and elm pollen can really be brutal on you. 
but it looks like uh, that probably will be with us for a week or two before it really starts to come way down. The reason it's so high up there today is because of the south winds and the very warm air that we had over the weekend bringing up uh, from the trees in East Texas. There's a lot of cedar and elm trees down that way. Outside right now in Tulsa, along with that uh, astronomically high pollen count, otherwise it's a pretty nice looking day, 64 degrees. The dew point is 45, the relative humidity is 47 percent, and the winds are calm. The barometer is 29.75, and it is falling. And looking at our conditions now around the area, temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s, most places, uh, 64 degrees uh, here in Brookside. Up to the north, it's a little bit cooler, right around 60 degrees. And uh, off to the south and east, we've got 74 at Fort Smith, 77 now uh, down at Hot Springs. We certainly have seen some wild weather changes happen over the last week, but it looks like uh, for most of this week, things are going to be a little bit more settled. I expect for tonight just a kind of a quiet and pleasant night with lows in the upper 40s around the area. And then uh, for tomorrow, looks like temperatures will be about the same or maybe just a air warmer than today. Probably no precipitation to take any of the pollen out of the air, though, until an important system comes in towards the weekend. But on our Weather Extra tonight, let's talk a little bit about uh, what is going to be happening in Oklahoma over the next few months, and that is tornado season. And, of course, we're coming into that severe weather season. Here's some incredible uh, video for you, uh, courtesy of KARE-TV up in Minneapolis, where they had a tremendous tornado up there a couple of years ago. And uh, for all of you that are interested in severe weather, and particularly in tornadoes, uh, the meteorologists from all three of the Tulsa TV stations and civil defense organizations will be getting together uh, tomorrow night at Will Rogers High School, and that's going to be at 7 o'clock, and we're going to have a severe weather seminar, and uh, we'll talk about flash floods and also lightning, and uh, I'll be presenting the portion on tornado awareness and how they develop and have some more of that video for you and talk about how those things form. So try and make it down there to see us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at Will Rogers High School. Back to you now, Jerry and Karen. Thank you, Gary. I don't like to think about that, but I know we must. That was incredible yeah, pictures. Yeah. More on that first pollen alert of the year, and look out for the mumps. Also in today's To Your Health, paying the price to beat childhood cancer. Michelle Miller suffers from frequent sinus headaches. The pain is all in here. It's a constant ache and pressure. You can feel like your eyes want to just... First. That's when you need Tylenol Sinus with the maximum strength of Tylenol pain reliever to help knock out sinus pain and the maximum amount of decongestant to break up sinus pressure fast. There is no pressure in my eyes. There is no pain. I mean, everything's great. Maximum strength Tylenol Sinus medication. It's stronger than sinus headaches and it won't make you drowsy. Things you can trust. An old friend. Mom. Things you can trust you can eat. Eckrich beef bologna, still made with fresh cuts of meat and spices, still slow cooked for hours. And since 1895, pure beef bologna with that purely Eckrich taste in every bite. Eckrich, the very best from our house to yours. Jimmy, did you know your daddy is planning for your future? He just bought a Toro GTS lawnmower with a five-year starting guarantee. For five years, it'll start in the first or second pull, or Toro will fix it free. So your daddy knows it'll be around a long time. Which means someday, you might be using it to mow the lawn. See the new five-year guarantee to start Toro lawnmowers at these Toro dealers. A world of imports can be yours when you shop Cinderella Pottery. This week only, a set of six white willow baskets, regular two to seven dollars, now one half price. Beautiful 14 blossom spring bushes, regular two sixty nine. This week only a dollar fifty nine. And the popular Maralika chair, regular nine ninety nine. This week only six ninety nine. All this and more now through Sunday. When you shop Cinderella Pottery. More than a pottery store. Mumps used to be considered a common childhood disease. Vaccine available now makes uh, vaccines available now mean that uh, we should not have to suffer from the mumps any longer. But our health reporter Linda Morton joins us to tell us about an outbreak and an outbreak at two of our largest universities, and that's an age group we just don't think is going to get the mumps. We really don't, Jerry. But what happens is they fell in the pocket where they came along before the vaccine was available oh. when they were 15 months old and then just never went back to get it. As mm -hmm. adults, we don't think about going back to get vaccines. True. They run the risk. 
The state health department is reporting 14 cases of the mumps between Oklahoma State University and the University of Oklahoma campuses, 11 cases at OU, 3 at OSU. The disease may have spread off campus in Norman. More cases are expected at OU as students return from spring break where they may have been exposed to students from other college campuses where there have also been outbreaks. Mumps is not to be taken lightly. It usually attacks the salivary and reproductive glands, but it is not limited to those. It also uh, may attack uh, the, the thyroid gland, uh, may damage the, the kidneys, uh, may, may even get into the brain and cause encephalitis. Uh, some people have uh, experienced a loss of hearing 15 to 25 percent of males and a smaller percentage of females experience sterility from the mumps. Children should be vaccinated at age 15 months when they are vaccinated against measles. Spring is definitely trying to arrive. As we told you earlier, the pollen count over the last 24 hours is extremely high. 11,680 cedar, over 5,000 mold spores, nearly 5,000 elm, and 420 other mixed pollens, bringing that total to, nearly, to over 22,000. High pollen levels are more likely to cause upper and lower respiratory allergies like hay fever and asthma. Those people who are sensitive to cedar elm and mold should remain indoors with your windows closed. Take any medication that you're prescribed for your allergies. The high pollen counts can also trigger asthma attacks in the 15 to 20 million asthma sufferers in this country. During an asthma attack, the bronchial tubes constrict or fill with mucus. Breathing is made difficult and in extreme situations, the patients suffocate. Although asthma-related deaths are few in this country, about 3,600 a year, the number has more than doubled since the late 1970s, mostly among ur black ur urban blacks where the asthma death rate is four times that for whites. Lack of patient education and lack of access to regular medical care is to blame. Often blacks receive their only asthma treatment in a hospital emergency this room. This does not provide an adequate continuity of care. Often there's physicians who are untrained in the care of asthma will have to administer to these individuals. New treatments for asthma should help lower those death rates. And finally today, some good news and bad news about children and cancer. The good news is more children than ever before are surviving cancer, but many of them pay a price later in life. Elliot Meadow is a survivor of childhood cancer. When he was 16, doctors discovered cancer in his knee area. I had a month of radiation treatments. Um, directly to the knee, and then I had 18 months of chemotherapy treatments. The treatments worked. In fact, three-quarters of all children with cancer can now be cured. While treatment of childhood cancer has vastly improved in the past 20 years, some children pay a price for survival. It's called the late effects of childhood cancer. Several new studies have found that more than 80 percent of all children who survive cancer later experience problems related to their treatments. That's because large doses of radiation and drugs are needed for therapy. Growth deficiencies are especially common. Radiation is very effective in getting rid of tumors because it prevents their growth. Now you can imagine that for children whose normal tissues are also growing, that radiation would prevent the growth of those tissues and that's exactly what happens. Along with growth deficiencies, cancer treatments may also result in learning disabilities, visual, dental, and heart problems, reproductive complications such as sterility, and an increased risk of developing a second cancer. Now that doctors know about these late effects, they're working to minimize them, lowering radiation and drug dosages when possible, offering counseling, and following up on patients years later. Despite the problems, Dr. Meadows says treatment is still worth the price. If you can cure a child, uh, you're saving a lot for the future. It's estimated that within the next few years, one in every thousand young people between the ages of 20 and 30 will be a childhood cancer survivor. And it's interesting to note that cancer is the second leading cause of death 
to accidents uh, when kids yeah. under age 14. So. I'm glad you reminded us again that mumps can actually be very dangerous. We laugh mm -hmm. about them as a childhood disease and what have you, but there are some s sidebars that you've got to watch for. Well, the thing to note, too, Jerry, is that there are a lot of people out there who probably did not have that vaccine. It was mm -hmm. not available until 1967. So probably if you're an adult and you're concerned about that, you should check with your doctor to see if maybe you need to get that vaccine. Because the older you get, the tougher it can be on tougher. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Linda. Thanks. A final word in our green country weather, and Doc Nelson flies by with a traffic watch in a moment. And a home that towers above the rest for a price we'll show you next. The 1989 Tulsa Auto Show, March 16th through the 19th at Expo Center. You'll see classic cars, spectacular displays, prototypes, and factory introductions from major manufacturers. Whether your taste runs to speed, beauty, or luxury, the Tulsa Auto Show has something for you. This Thursday, TV2 offers a dollar discount off all tickets for opening day. Kids under 12 get in free. The 1989 Tulsa Auto Show. The past, the present, and the future. The wheel. Sliced bread. Indoor plumbing. Lifetime equity. Lifetime equity? Yes. Introducing a better way to get what you want from Remco. It's like renting to own, but with a difference. If you return something, you get credit for the payments you've made. Lifetime equity is only at Remco, where nobody treats you better. Well, maybe mom. just changed doctors. Why? We were waiting for weeks to see him. Now we have a family practice physician who specializes in caring for the entire family. One phone call gets the appointment. No more hassle. He takes care of our needs at affordable rates. Times have indeed changed for the better. If you need a family physician, call 744-4000. Doctors Hospital, the choice of family physicians. Why are people changing their pharmacy to Walmart's pharmacy? I tried Walmart, and you know, they do have better prices. Their pharmacists convinced me. They really talked to me about my medications. I'm always shopping Walmart. I don't know why I didn't shop their pharmacy sooner. It's really handy. Join people like yourself who are changing their pharmacy to Walmart's pharmacy for the lowest everyday prices. And me. Try us. Walmart Pharmacy. A political race involving two opponents can stir up criticism and controversy, sometimes creating hard feelings. But what if your neighbors? Well, that's one of the stories we're working on for News Center 2 at 6 o'clock, and Beth Ringel is here now with more. Beth? Well, Jerry, it certainly can put a friendship to the test. Scott Thompson looks at two next-door neighbors running for the same house seat in Sepulpa and how neighborly love survives the test of politics. We'll show you some place that everyone wants to go these days for a wash, and in sports, Al Jerkins has the final regular season college basketball poll. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Beth. Time now to check on the Monday afternoon rush hour. Doc Nelson's up in Chopper 74 with the New Center 2 traffic watch. Doc? Go, 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 Doc. Go, Doc. The uh, downtown area along uh, I-44. That's down all the way through uh, almost to Sheridan as you're trying to go eastbound. One of the problems, we've got a very serious accident involving IPSA police fire on the scene there that's affecting traffic going southbound and northbound about 4600 south yale the problem IPSA involved in an accident picked up a uh, suspected heart attack victim at 41st in yale involved in an accident at 46 shutting down the complete northbound lanes southbound lanes blocked by emergency equipment at that point it's just a little bit north of i-44 and uh in uh yale that is uh, traffic in southeast Tulsa a mess. They're trying to go and use uh, Lewis, Harvard, Sheridan, Memorial, but it's still putting an awful load on those other streets that are usually very heavy. So I think they're going to be a little bit late getting home. Stock Nelson in Chopper 74 for New Center 2's Traffic Watch. Thank you, Doc. Well, that's tough. It does sound bad. If you've ever dreamed of living high on the hog, high above it all, 
there's a special home on the market that's just for you. From the distance, it looks like a plain old water tower, but this water tower in Seal Beach, California, has been converted into a very unique home that's now for sale for a mere three and a half million dollars. The owner and the builder of the home says the tower has some other spectacular features besides the view. The table that we have here is used as a, uh, uh, as a table. Uh, it can be used as a hearth. It can be used as a bar, depending upon what height you set it. Or it can be used as a centerpiece of the room when it's retracted into the ceiling. And, of course, we have an elevator that brings them up to the, to the living room area level. The bedrooms all have special touches as well. There's a rotating bathroom in the master suite, and the other bedroom has a working train that circles the room. Armstrong has lived in the tower since its completion in 1985, and he says the sunsets are what he will miss the most. I would imagine. You know, we promised earlier we were going to find Jeff Lazalier, yes. and he was going to have a pet today. We have located him on location, and uh, look, hey, that's a nice one today, Jeff. Oh, Jerry, that's right. Matter of fact, we need somebody to call Animal Aid right away. At 5873024, we have a, a male chow mix. He's a couple of months old right now, as you can see, growing up. He'll be a large sized dog, but a good yard dog, and he is extremely friendly. He likes everyone in here. Look at that tail go. But we're live at 104 Gilcrease Museum Road this evening with your weather updated. I'm going to let him go. I don't think I can hang on anymore. He likes our photographer JT quite a bit. We also have a couple of little female chow pups here. They're very young and they need to be placed as well. And they're quite cute as you can see on the cage here just to my left. Now if you're worried about the weather, it's going to be pretty nice. This evening's going to be fair to partly cloudy with lows in the 40s and 50s. Then tomorrow's high should be back up pretty close to the 70s. Tiny chance of a thunder shower down to the southeast tomorrow. But again, call Animal Aid at 587-3024 and let's help find these dogs a good home. Now back to the studio. Good idea. They're neat. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. And that's our time live at 5 for a sunny Monday afternoon. We now join NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. See you later.